How can we train employees to deal with bad customers? That's today's Learn Geek Big Question. Hi there, I'm JD from Learn Geek and Exonify, and I tackle one big question from the LD community every week on my Learn Geek YouTube channel. Today, we're tackling the number one challenge frontline employees face in today's workplace bad customers. We all know that customer service is an essential part of most frontline jobs. It doesn't matter if you're a contact center agent or a retail associate or a restaurant server. Working with customers is the biggest part of your day, and customer satisfaction is a big part of how you're measured. In fact, the first training video I ever watched at my first job was about customer service. Here's a quick clip. It can be difficult to remain composed when a customer is disrespectful, which is why I'm going to share a few simple tricks to help you handle problem customers. Let's dive in. This customer is angry because his order is incorrect. While his tone is regrettable, his complaint is still valid. Apologize and correct the error. Don't be too hard on yourself. Mistakes happen. But never make the same mistake twice. Okay, that wasn't the video I actually watched during my onboarding at my first job, but it was really similar. That's what makes that whole thing funny. And then, you know, so many years later, the last method, listen, apologize, solve, thank, it's still ingrained in my head because from that day, I used it over and over and over again during 20 years on the front line. Bad customers have long been an expected but unpredictable part of frontline work. You know, sometimes a customer is justifiably annoyed because their food order came out late and it wasn't what they wanted. Sometimes a customer is unjustifiably disruptive because, well, you don't really know why. You just know that this interaction has the potential to totally sink your mood, alter the course of your day, maybe go viral on social media, possibly impact your job security, and in the worst circumstances, even turn into a dangerous situation. I'm thankful I got out of customer service before TikTok emerged because I didn't have to deal with that version of bad customers. But unfortunately, this is what frontline workers and managers now have to deal with every day. And it's only getting worse according to the latest research on the frontline workplace. For example, did you know that 40% of retail associates are scared to go to work due to increasing customer volatility and threats of violence. 48% of hospitality managers have had to expel or ban guests due to the way they treat workers. And 46% of frontline employees have experienced emotional outbursts or cried at work because of how they've been treated. Now, I certainly had my moments with tough-to-please customers over the years because I've been called all types of names, I've had lots of people tell me they're going to call corporate because they didn't get their way in my location. I've been physically threatened more times than I like to remember. And it got so bad at one job that the police had to escort me to my car in the parking lot every night because I got into so many difficult situations in my role as a manager. I definitely wasn't paid enough money to deal with that stuff every day. The fact is no one is. So that begs the question, why? Why are some customers so bad and why are they getting worse? While some people are just outright ridiculous, I do think it's important to consider both sides of the story because while 43% of employees say that customers now demand higher levels of service, 44% of customers believe service levels have gotten worse over the past three years. And with prices increasing, more junk fees being added to bills, shrinkflation, replacing you know pandemic-era concerns like product shortages and understaffing, a lot of customers are skeptical of the value that they're getting for their money. And frankly, a lot of people just think they're getting ripped off and they're taking it out on frontline workers. And what makes this even more unfortunate is that many employees actually agree with their customers. Only 23% of employees think their organizations always deliver on their promises to customers. And the percentage of workers who are extremely proud of the quality of their company's products and services, it's actually dropped from 36% to 30% in 2023. Now, by no means am I saying that bad customer behavior is justified, ever. 
but I am saying that both customers and employees see a problem with how they're being treated. And that means that this issue is way bigger than training. So what can we do to help frontline employees better deal with bad customers? Well, first, we can try to reduce the number of bad customers. Like I said, some people are just you know, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're trying to scam stuff for free. Maybe they're, let's just say, not the kind of people you would invite to your birthday party. So let's put them aside for the moment and focus on everyone else, the people that we can actually help. Now, there is a clear top of the list thing that organizations can do to improve customer service and reduce the number of customer service related incidents frontline workers have to deal with. In fact, both employees and CHROs agree that it's the single biggest barrier to exceptional customer service. What is it? Wait for it. Can you guess what I'm, what I'm about to say? And why it's probably not going to be the answer to our problem here? Because it's one of the more expensive things that a company would do in this situation. But it is a big part of the problem that they have total control over. And I know this is getting ridiculous. So I'm just going to tell you, it's staffing. 43% of employees and one third of CHROs agree that staffing is the biggest barrier to delivering great customer service. And it's not even close. Training was way behind at 15 and 13%, followed by equipment and resources at 9 and 13% respectively. And the fact is that no amount of customer service training can overcome understaffing. You can't open another register without a cashier. You can't help someone find the right sneakers without a salesperson. You can't reduce hold time if there's no one there to pick up the phone. And you can't seat that party of two at the time of their reservation for that special dinner if you don't have a server for their table. So if you want to improve CSAT and reduce the number of problematic customer interactions that your people face, the first thing you need to do is assess your labor budget and make sure you have the right number of people in place to handle the work. And that means the expected stuff, you know, typical guest flow, sales volume, delivery schedule, staffing models, all those kinds of things. Plus, you need to account for the unexpected stuff. Sudden rushes, emergency situations, the fact that the truck is two hours late, and the likelihood that a bunch of your team members are probably new and operating at maybe 50, 75% capacity, because that's just the nature of high turnover workplaces. And we have to remember, not all labor hours are created equal. So fixing your staffing levels will help people get the job done right, put the right amount of focus on your customers, and make sure people never have to work alone and feel at risk. And it can also help with the second best way to help employees deal with bad customers, and that's getting managers into the operation. Managers are your best defense against bad customers. First of all, a visible manager is a deterrent against bad behavior. It may not stop everyone and every action, but people are generally less likely to do silly things when the person who can get them in trouble is standing right there. Second, a visible manager is a useful crutch for an employee who may be uncertain on how to handle a difficult situation. They have someone that they can turn to that is expected to know the answer and has probably dealt with similar situations in the past. And then finally, when managers are available in the operation, they can respond that much more quickly to customer escalations. There's a big difference between a customer who asks for the manager and then gets someone within, within 60 seconds and a customer who asks for a manager and has to wait like 10 minutes to be heard. So when you properly staff the operation, managers can focus on running the business and supporting their teams rather than having to step into their roles to close those types of labor gaps. And they should also look for ways that you can simplify the manager role to reduce some of their administrative effort. So they're less tempted or even required to stay in the office or back of house. And instead, they can spend 70 to 80% of their time on the floor in the operation with guests. 
And then you also need to make sure that managers have the confidence and the skill needed to deal with bad customers. In fact, 51%, so half of managers are asking for more training on conflict resolution. So make sure those management training programs prioritize these types of skills and make sure that managers also have a place to go where they can share proven practices and ask questions and get help from peers who, again, have probably faced similar situations themselves. Okay, we've properly staffed the operation. We have visible, capable managers who are ready and willing to help. Now we can finally talk about training. Now, you've probably noticed I've been using the term bad customers throughout this video instead of the usual, you know, corporate phrasing like upset customers or challenging customers. And that's because I think we need to be frank about the situation employees face every day and not just soften the message because then it can feel either disjointed or sometimes just disrespectful to what people actually have to do on the job. Not every challenging customer situation is the result of a bad customer, but, right, right. So when it comes to training, first thing we need to do is make sure employees have the knowledge, the tools, and the support needed to do the job well, right? Because if we're giving people the bare minimum support and just throwing people out there to figure things out on their own, their limited capability is going to make things worse, but if we provide people with effective onboarding, make sure people feel comfortable, capable, and confident before they're out there on their own, and then have ongoing feedback, reinforcement, communication, development opportunities, we can make sure that poor employee performance is not part of the equation in this story. And then for customer service training, we got to get unfluffed. Strange word, unfluffed. Because we're not just talking about customer service in this conversation. We're talking about hard skills like de-escalation, conflict resolution, risk avoidance, communicating in emergency situations. There's a reason that some content providers actually use subject matter experts like former hostage negotiators to talk about this kind of stuff. This is serious business. These skills aren't easy to develop. Not a lot of people walk in to the workplace with these capabilities. So a single training video where you tell people to say, you know, I'm sorry without admitting fault, that's not gonna do it for people. So we need to focus on the specific skills rather than trying to cover everything in one quick like customer service 101 course that's in the middle of an already hectic onboarding program. And we need to continue to develop these skills using targeted micro learning approaches so people have a chance to explore new methods and connect what they're learning along the way with what they're doing on the job every day. And then we can make sure those skills get reinforced consistently through practice. So for example, you could have managers walk through different types of customer scenarios during pre-shift huddles or maybe during one-on-one -on -one conversations. And you could also deploy quick nudge activities directly to employees digitally and challenge people to solve different types of problems and how they would respond to different types of situations, particularly negative situations, especially those corner cases. You're not the formulaic everyday stuff that always has a happy ending, the things that you're less likely to see that become very problematic when those challenging situations arise. But in our training, we shouldn't just focus on the reaction. We need to make sure our customer service training includes proactive approaches to dealing with bad customers, including what people can do to prevent a customer from turning bad. In fact, the best customer service moment in my entire career happened because I was able to do that. And I'll tell you the whole story before we wrap things up. But in your training and communication, emphasize that bad customer situations, they aren't personal. Yes, some people try to make it personal by attacking the individual rather than just expressing anger with the organization or the situation. But it's important to remind employees repeatedly that they don't know this person and this person doesn't know or get to judge them. It took me a long time to realize that while I, have a, I may have an opinion of the customer in that moment, I don't know where they're coming from or why they're acting this way. So the more clinical and the more empathetic that we can be from the start, the more prepared people will be to handle whatever situation they face. Then last one, we can't make training entirely a push experience. That's true of a lot of different topics, but especially this one. 
We need to encourage employees to share their customer experiences, including what does and doesn't work in real life when dealing with bad customers. Of course, the conversation needs to stay professional. We should not have a gripe fest. It's not okay to mock people, but we need to share those real world stories because it's one of the best ways to learn and evolve your skills with people like you who do the same kind of work and face the same kind of challenges, especially the kind of challenges that just tend not to be covered in the classroom. Because remember, we're talking about an expected but unpredictable part of frontline work. Then the last thing I wanna hit on uh, before I, I tell my story is execution. Because your company's gotta have clear rules in place about how you expect customers to behave. Because without rules, you can't hold people accountable. And even more importantly, you can't set the boundaries for employees so they know what is and isn't acceptable as part of their job. But once you have those rules, you need to back up your people, especially when customers break those rules. Enough is enough with the whole the customer is always right thing because they're not. We know that. Yes, they deserve the benefit of the doubt, but that doesn't mean that we should always listen to people we've never met before instead of trusting the people we work with every day. You can't deliver a great customer experience without first fostering a great employee experience. So employees have to come first. And as an operations manager, the smartest thing I ever did to build trust with my frontline teams was backing them during difficult situations. Because you know what happens? People talk about those moments with their peers. And then suddenly people are willing to work harder for you because they know that you're going to be there to stand up for them when it matters. But at the same time, you're willing to hold them accountable if they don't hold up their side of the bargain as well. And then your company should also consider potentially keeping track of bad customer behavior. If the same people are doing the same things over and over again, it's only going to frustrate your people and hurt their ability to do their jobs and maybe ask them to kind of walk through the door at that point. So we should be keeping notes, maybe develop a database, and then take action when people are repeatedly problematic, either in one location or maybe in multiple locations across your business. And then finally, we need to make sure employees get the support they need during and after, before, during and after bad situations. Can't tell people just like suck it up and get back out there. I was once yelled at for 25 minutes by a customer for something I definitely didn't do. I had to take it because it was my job, but then I had to go home because I just couldn't recover that quickly from that encounter. So we need to give people time to cool off. We need to ask them what they need. We need to provide emotional support because these are people not just employees. And this is another reason why staffing is the first tactic on this list because you just don't know how someone's gonna be impacted by an unexpected occurrence and you do still have an operation to run. Now, a lot of the research I referenced throughout this video is gonna be available in an upcoming report from my team at Exonify. So be sure to follow me on LinkedIn so you can download our 2024 desk list report as soon as it drops. And besides bad customers being you know, the biggest challenge, facing frontline workers, and the second biggest challenge facing frontline managers, there's another important insight that we're gonna be sharing in our report. Because our report focuses on today, how we can help frontline workers have a great day at work every day before we start thinking about tomorrow and topics like career paths, development, and promotions. So we asked frontline workers, what makes a good day at work? What do you think was at the top of that list? It wasn't about getting enough hours or the right schedule. It wasn't about making enough money. All of those are important things that are on the list. And it wasn't about learning and development. The top things that make people feel like they had a good day at work were they got all their tasks done and they helped a customer solve a problem. Because employees want to do a good job. They want to help your customers, but they need your help to make that happen. And I remember the first bad customer experience I had as a 17-year-old movie theater employee. I remember the time, again, I got yelled at so badly I had to go home. I remember the threats, the name calling, the police escorts, and I definitely remember the one time someone set my building on fire. Different story. But I also remember the times I was able to turn a bad situation into a positive experience because I had the tools and the skills needed to make a difference. And the best memory I have from almost 20 years of customer service experience is one of those moments. You see, I was managing the world's busiest roller coaster at the time, and it was a busy, warm summer, summer day in July. 
And a mom, a dad, and two young boys, they came up to the entrance to the ride and they found that we were actually closed for technical reasons at that time. And it's always disappointing when your favorite ride is unavailable. But these parents were a little bit more than disappointed. And by the looks on their faces, their mood could be best described as pre-volcanic at that moment. At least that's how it looked to me because I was about 10 feet away at the moment. So I wandered over to them and I did my typical, hey everybody, how's it going today? And that was the opening that the parents needed because they started into the story of what had become an all around bad day because first their tickets didn't scan properly at the front gate so they had to wait for someone to come over to help them. Then they stood in line for 30 minutes to get coffee. Then they tried to go on the ride next door but that broke down right before they were about to get on. And I could tell this was gonna go for a bit. And we were surrounded by a few hundred people that were trying to get on this ride. So I asked the family to walk with me so we could get out of the crowd. And I already had an idea for what I was going to do to fix their day, but I didn't say anything yet. So instead, we just kind of walked down the path as they continued to tell me about everything that had gone wrong. And the two little boys, they were following along as their parents were clearly taking advantage of the opportunity to vent to someone wearing manager clothes. But it was actually the, the little boys that figured out what was going on way before the parents did because they were a little distracted. So I just kept listening. And then I you know, kind of nudged the family to stand up alongside the wall um, as I put my arm up in the, uh, this is my arm in the hold sign that I was still listening to them holding my arm up. And you know, we kept talking as I just kind of ushered them along into the ride vehicle that had just pulled up in front of us. And that was when they realized that I had walked them all the way into the unload area of Splash Mountain. And they had no idea what was going on as I, as I leaned into the vehicle and I handed them a set of fast passes and I told them to come, come on back over to my location and visit us once we got things fixed up. Uh, but until then, enjoy the ride and oh, by the way, stay dry. And then I dropped my arm into the clear signal and off they went into the ride and I never saw that family again. But I did hear about them because my boss called me into her office about a month later and handed me a letter from guest relations. The family had written to the company about the wonderful time they had on vacation. And the bulk of the letter was about that day and that interaction with the manager at Splash Mountain who had saved the vacation. And their kids actually had started calling me a superhero because I could get them on the ride without having to wait. And all it took to turn a no good, very bad, terrible day into an experience worth writing a letter about was five minutes, the willingness to help, a few simple recovery tools, and the know-how to pay attention and step in before an upset customer becomes a bad customer. And that is my Learn Geek big question for this week. So if you have a question of any size you'd like me to explore, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn or contact me via my website at learngeek.co. Until next time, thank you for everything you do. Let me know how I can help and be well. Bye now. Bye now.